Hey everybody, welcome to The Realistic Prepper. This is show number six. My co-host, David Banther. Hello. And uh, today we're going to be talking about, a, a, it's kind of a controversial subject to some people. It's going to be non-lethal weapons or less lethal weapons. And and by, by that we mean uh, any impact weapon or pepper spray or stun gun or taser. Um, uh, weapons that are meant to be non-lethal mm -hmm. and, and David and I were discussing this uh, a few minutes ago uh, pre-show and the, the where, where some of the controversy is is in the uh, in the uh, the naming of the weapons you mm -hmm. know people say less lethal and that's what they've always been called but you know some of these weapons especially your impact weapons and even your your tasers and stuff under the certain you know certain conditions uh, they, they can indeed be lethal, so we need to Certainly. make a distinction there and call. I, I prefer to call them less than lethal, but mm -hmm. we'll use the terms interchangeably in this uh, in this show. Um, but I, I think it's something that a lot of people overlook, and I think it's an option that that people need. They don't think they need, or they don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. But there, there's a gap between hand-to-hand -hand combat and combatives, which is what we discussed in the last podcast, mm -hmm. and the, the lethal going directly to the lethal option mm -hmm. which is uh, uh, your gun or your knife or whatever you carry for self-defense mm -hmm. your lethal option for self-defense mm -hmm. there, there's definitely a gap there that needs to be bridged your thoughts on it David uh, yes exactly and um and definitely um and we are like 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 uh, like Jack said we are going to be leaving uh, knives to the uh, to a whole different podcast because that needs a whole podcast or possibly a series for that. Um, yes, uh, oftentimes these can be viewed, these types of less lethal weapons can be viewed as, well, they're for women, pepper spray or a coup baton. But actually, no, they're not. Um, you need, a, you need a, a less lethal option. Again, like we talked about in combatives, not everything is a gunfight. And, and, and firing your gun is a very big deal. It, it can be a life-changing event, and it's not always calls for that. So uh, overall, the whole legal theme for the show is check the laws in your state. Especially if you live in the Northeast or in California, you might have um, prohibitive laws that even regulate pepper spray. And outside of the U.S., is a whole different story. I know my brother lived over in the Netherlands. You couldn't have anything. Right. Um, well, at least the law-abiding people couldn't have anything. That's one of the story. So, um, so uh, basically, you want to have the ability to use something that's not going to be uh, for sure lethal, like a knife or a gun. And, uh, have something and know how to use it well. But I think the good overall theme to kind of, when you're thinking about less lethal weapons, focus first on um, weapons of opportunity. Meaning you walk into a room wherever you are, say you don't have anything on you, you don't have your gun, your knife, a, a less lethal weapon like pepper spray. Anything around you can be used as a weapon if needed. It's important that you're constantly aware of that uh, in your surroundings. So if you had to defend yourself and you needed a weapon, you would have one ready, um, you know, uh, ready on hand. So um, especially when you're in uh, sterile areas like the airport and places where you cannot bring uh, a weapon and many times a less lethal weapon in there, um, just think of common sense things that you can have with you like a simple pen, not even a tactical pen, just a simple pen. Um, and different things that uh, are in everywhere we go that you could detach, pull out, and use as a weapon if needed. So having that mindset, I think, is very important first. And then selecting what less lethal weapon that you want to use. I'll give you a good example of a situation I was in just this morning. Um, my wife wanted me to, uh, she, she got my grandson a little ninja turtle heart shaped mm -hmm. ninja turtle box full of chocolates for uh, valentine's day and she wanted me to go by his school and uh, drop it off for him mm -hmm. well I, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the with the, the laws regarding guns and schools but uh basically i had to leave everything that looked like a weapon out in the car i, yes. I was not allowed to walk into the building with that and i'm not going to chance that anyway no. could i have done it maybe but why risk it right yes so, it's a felony right, if you do is, regardless, yeah. so i left uh, i left my gun in the car my spare magazine pulled my knife off left it in the console and uh at, on my way walking in i seen there's a couple of people walking uh they're going to be cutting a 90 across mm -hmm. my path and I'm, I'm thinking to myself the first thing that comes to my mind you know what do i have on me what what do i have that i could use and my first thought i have my keys on a carabiner 
I, I carry my keys on a, on a large mm -hmm. carabiner. That right there can be used as a set of knuckles or an impact mm -hmm. weapon. The keys themselves can be used as a weapon. Um, so it just, you know, we're, we're not saying that every situation you have to be paranoid or whatever. It, it's not about paranoia. It, it's more about being aware of your surroundings and what you have available to you at this time should you need something. Because when something is actually happening, something is taking place, that is not the time to be thinking, what no. do I have at my disposal? You need to have already went over that in your mind way ahead of time mm -hmm. and, and be one step ahead of the game. Um, so we were discussing some options earlier and uh, what will be considered non-lethal or less lethal weapons. And uh, one of the things that people, uh, you know, everybody knows about pepper spray, everybody knows about stun guns. But the Kubaton is not something that a lot of uh, a lot of people are familiar with, and basically, when I say a Kubaton, all I'm saying is, traditionally, it was a um, uh, a metal or wooden uh, <laughs> stick about you know five to six inches long, maybe you know maybe about an inch around, and and it was you know maybe it may have had like a not really a sharp point on it, but a sharper point on one end, mm -hmm. and and traditionally that's what it is, and it might be grooved for an easier gripping. Um, I've had one that I've carried around with me for about 12 years now, and basically it's just a five inch long piece of aluminum uh, with a slightly rounded end and uh, some grooves on it for a better grip, but there's a lot of techniques that you can actually use with something like that to control a person without having to resort to deadly force. Now, now could you escalate it and, and use that in a lethal manner? Yeah, you absolutely could. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you could use that to control. Um, let me give you an example. Uh, when I first got mine, I was required to, uh, I was required to take a one day class on its use. Mm -hmm. And we, we did a one-day class on its use, and then we, we uh, when we left, we got a uh, a VHS tape. That, that's how long it's been ago. They <laughs> actually gave us VHS tapes, and uh, you know we we had a tape that was about three hours of instructions on it, and everything from using it to manipulate pressure points, joint locks, uh, uh, takedowns, and there's just a lot you can do. You'd be surprised. There's a lot you can do with just a five-inch piece of steel or a stick. Mm -hmm. your, your thoughts on it? I, I, mean, uh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, um, just like with a gun or with combatives, you have to know what you're doing. Um, if you carry a less lethal weapon, you should get training on it just the same as you would a firearm or, or learning how to fight. Definitely. But just overall, just learn different parts of the body that if you have to defend yourself, what you could use, like Jack said, a stick, a pole, something found on the ground that you could jab in and, and hopefully not kill the person if you don't have to, but at least get them to where they're going to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to back off. Right. So learning a little bit of anatomy there could go a long way, especially with a less lethal weapon, because um, placement can be key with that. And um, I would just stress again, you know, it's all about being aware of your surroundings, um, always looking for weapons of opportunity. It doesn't mean you're, that you're walking around paranoid and like, okay, what's in the room I could use to, to get somebody? No, it's just, it's having that preparedness mindset. And knowing that, um, you know, if, if, if you needed to in, an, in, a, in a split second, you could take something and use that to, to, to defend yourself and your family. Right. And uh, so, um, uh, but overall, I think um, picking out one or two of these less lethal items and learning how to use them well is going gonna, is gonna to serve you, uh, it's going to serve you best than just maybe buying something and putting it in a closet, which I'm more than guilty of, or, you know. Well, I think we all are. So yeah. We, we, we'll see something cool at Walmart or whatever, and it's like, oh, you know, that would be great mm -hmm. for whatever. We buy it, and it ends up in the gear box in the closet, mm -hmm. you know, that we go through once yep. a year. You know, and, and that's true, but if you're going to carry something, uh, and like you said, training is key. Learn, learn how to use it. You know, you, you can take, a, believe it or not, you can take a class on how to use pepper spray. You oh, can yeah. take a class on how to use a Kubaton. You can take classes on how to use a taser. Mm -hmm. um, now, now you have to do a little research and find out where these are offered and who is actually doing the classes. But you, you can take these classes and uh, they're, they're uh, uh, generally not very expensive. They're, they're one day classes and you have some idea uh, of how to use what your what what your chosen uh, less lethal option is, and and the thing about it is, it's just like you said, like a firearm or anything else. You wouldn't think about carrying a firearm. Well, some people do, but mm -hmm. most people that have common sense would not think of carrying around a firearm without some type of training. 
No. And, and it's the same way. If you're going to use a, a, a Kubaton or some type of impact weapon or anything else, you do need to understand, you know, the proper, proper safety measures, the proper way to mm-hmm. use these things. Um, I think a lot of people, uh, and, and, and I, I could be wrong about this, but generally I think uh, uh, the the less lethal options or the uh, the non-lethal weapons have kind of been regulated to like al- almost like uh, second class uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, type things and the reason why I say this you walk in any gun show I don't know if you have gun shows in your area oh yeah you, you walk in any gun show and what's the first thing you hear going off somebody's back there popping a taser or, yeah you know you see these brass knuckles laying all over the table we'll get mm-hmm. into that in a minute yeah and uh, you, you, you see all these less lethal options almost like they're a novelty or a gadget or whatever and you have people buying these things for a few dollars and walking out with them with no idea what they're doing you know they they go home and end up spraying themselves and the cat with the pepper spray and you know end up you know getting in trouble so you know it definitely if you're gonna if you're gonna find out you know what's your what your non-lethal or less lethal options are do some research find out what is and is not legal in your area first Mm-hmm. Once you know what is legal in your area, in your jurisdiction, I'm not talking about necessarily statewide, but locally, because your, mm-hmm. your local laws can actually be a little different than state law. Exactly. So find out what your what your local laws are regarding the carry and use of these weapons, and then once you find out what your options are available, pick out what suits you and your needs, and then get training with it. And, and don't get the cheap, uh, you know... Like with your pepper spray, and and I'm guilty of it at one point. Um, I remember going to a gun show and buying these cans of pepper spray. They were like five dollars a piece or something, mm-hmm. and they were practically useless. Uh, I, I think I got like six of them in a pack. Oh and, yeah. And and I think three of them actually worked. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, so so you stay away from the cheap stuff. You know, if you're gonna get pepper spray get the good stuff you know you're probably exactly. going to pay a little more 12 15 20 dollars a can whatever you're going to pay a little bit more for it but you know it's going to work when you need it um and that, the same thing can be said for uh for you know it, you use the same mentality you would when purchasing a firearm mm-hmm. the, the more you pay for it generally speaking the higher quality is going to be buy a name brand that's trusted and you know and, and go from there, but don't don't go to the gun show and buy the cheap stuff that's just laying on the uh, mm-hmm. the table with the with the uh, what is it, the bargain bin dollar mm-hmm. piece yeah. stuff. Don't don't do that. No, no, but I think you made a good point when you're talking about um, these weapons being viewed as kind of second class. In my opinion, it just completes the trifecta of having combatives, less lethal, and then lethal weapons. Lethal being a being, you know, a knife and a gun. Right. It gives so you an yeah, I, pepper spray is not just for women. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I know that's kind of an old, an old like, a, like, like an old view of it, but definitely it just makes so much more common sense. And, and even pepper spray, you know, if you have, um, and, and I, you, can, you can always tell that pepper spray is my preferred non, or sorry, less lethal option. If you have people that you need to ward off that maybe aren't trying to kill you per se or, you know, just drunks or whatnot, that's an excellent option you have. Uh, oh, and yeah. it's very simple. It's very effective. I've not been sprayed directly, but I've been sprayed indirectly in whiffs of it. And it's, you, I mean, it, it's 20 to, minutes need, of agony. You need to get sprayed with it at some point. It's an experience you need oh, to go through. <laughs> that, 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 the, the side spray I got twice was enough for me. That Everybody needs to experience that. In my mind, in my mind, now this just may be my training coming through, mm-hmm. uh, but, but when I was a correctional officer and, and later, uh, in, in my security work, uh, if you were going to carry pepper spray, you had to get sprayed with it. That's what they do here, yeah. <clears throat> and if you were going to carry a taser, you had to get tased. And, you know, that that's just how it is. And I really think that everyone that's going to carry, uh, if, if you're going to carry pepper spray, you should be sprayed with it at some point. That way you know what the other person is going to be going through and you know what to expect. If you're going to carry a stun gun or a taser, and I'll make the distinction between those two in a minute. But you need to be tased or stunned at some point with that weapon so mm-hmm. you know what to expect. Because your expectations may be that, oh man, the guy at the gun show said this thing's 200,000 volts and it, it'll drop a horse and mm-hmm. all this. And then when you actually get shocked with it, it, it's no worse than grabbing a hold of an electric fence. You know what I mean? It, it's not comfortable, but it's tolerable. Now, mm-hmm. you add adrenaline into the equation and someone trying to hurt you, this mm-hmm. may not do anything to them at all other than piss them off. Exactly. So, so you need to know what you're carrying and what it's capable of doing uh, uh, before you make the decision to carry that daily, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
So, you know, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about. You need to find the best option for you. Mm-hmm. Get familiar with what that is. Uh, and, and the distinction we were making a few minutes ago between non-lethal, less lethal, and why we say that, here's why. Uh, and, and then I want to dovetail off into something mm-hmm. else. But here, here's why we say that. If, if someone has a pacemaker or they have a heart condition, uh, a stun gun or a taser could kill that person. Exactly. And, and I mean, it, it's a sad reality that that has happened. Uh, it, it's happened with the police departments in my area. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm sure it's happened in Florida. Uh, oh, yeah. There, there's been many cases of people getting tased and or, or stunned and it killing them or them, mm-hmm. them dying as a result of, uh, of that. Um, so, so you have to be mindful of it, and, and that's not to say you know it's not an option. It's just that's why we're making the distinction between non-lethal versus less lethal. Uh, oh, pepper, sure. pepper spray, as David pointed out, if someone has really bad asthma, you pepper spray that person, they could die from it. So, yeah, no, it's it's definitely you, it should not looked at. Oh well, these these items are always non 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 lethal. Well, well, oftentimes they are non lethal. They can be lethal. So. They should be treated with the same amount of respect that you treat, um, you know, your gun and your knife. Absolutely. Um, now, you were talking about a situation a few minutes ago where a, a couple of people, you know, maybe they're not uh, life-threatening, but, you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're enough of a threat that you feel justified sure. in using your pepper spray. I can give you another example of that. Um, carrying around just a little canister of pepper spray on your keychain. Um, yeah. Let's say I go out to the mailbox in a few minutes to check my mail. Mm-hmm. And the neighbor, my neighbor over here has a, uh, uh, probably an 85 pound pit bull. Oh, wow. And occasionally that dog's running loose. Okay. Normally it's in a pen behind the house. Occasionally I've seen it running loose. Mm-hmm. So let's say I'm going to the mailbox and this dog runs up on me. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe it's friendly, maybe it's not. You know, a- am I justified? And, and how is it going to look? If I pull my gun out right then and, and I blow the neighbor's dog away right here in front of him. In the you know south, I mean? that's not something that's taken lightly. In the south, that's just not something you do. And it, You know, if the oh. dog is actually attacking me and, and it, 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 you know, attacking me or someone I love, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm justified. I pull the gun out. I do what I got to do. I feel bad for the neighbor, but I did what I had to do. But mm-hmm. in a situation where you're not really sure, the dog is running toward you. You got an 85-pound pit bull running towards you. You don't know if it's aggressive or not. You know, in that situation, well, do I pull my gun or do it? You know, pull the pepper spray out, have it ready. The dog gets a little closer than what you'd like. Shoot some pepper spray at it. It's going to mm-hmm. send him running. Nobody got hurt. The dog didn't get hurt, really. It's going to wear off in a few minutes, and mm-hmm. everybody's fine. You keep your relationship with the neighbor intact. Yeah. And and nobody got hurt in that situation because you had you know, a $5 thing of pepper spray. And they, they do make them. I don't know what the difference is, but they do make ones just for dogs. I've seen them. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what the difference is between that and the ones for right. humans, but I, to me, it's. I'm sure they'd work the same. I don't know whether... whether it, it might actually be less lethal, the one right. for the animals, I'm guessing, but uh, I would just use the regular pepper spray. Right, and, and it will work. I've seen people use them on dogs. And uh, as a matter of fact, a buddy of mine, uh, she worked security at the local Walmart here. Uh, I, I brought her when I when I got those cans of pepper spray. Yeah. When I found one that actually worked, I gave it to her as a present, and uh, she actually did use it on her dog in her neighborhood. She was walking her block, and uh, she didn't know if the dog was going to be aggressive or not, but it was kind of blocking her path. Yeah. And uh, th- th- this girl was very small. She's about ninety pounds. Mm-hmm. This dog was bigger than she was. It was a, a, a German Shepherd, a mm-hmm. lot bigger than she was. And I mean, she just pulled it out, and squirted it one time. Dog ran away never seen it again you know what i mean just it left her alone who knows was it going to be aggressive was it not but why take that chance you know yeah and that's i think that that's a very good point you bring up is that you know when you're talking especially about uh, less lethal weapons um you really get into animal defense then um you know because it's not always appropriate to shoot an animal definitely if you have to by all by all by by all means shoot 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 the shoot the animal but there's a lot of better options than to shoot the animal you, um, and, and uh, pepper spray. Well, especially if you're in a residential neighborhood. I mean, I'm in a, uh, a nice little middle-class mm-hmm. neighborhood. I pull my gun out and I open fire in the middle of my neighborhood. <laughs> That's yeah. Even though it's not technically inside the city limits and illegal, mm-hmm. there's going to be some pissed-off neighbors. 
Yeah, and that's why I keep on I keep on saying shooting your shooting your gun is a life changing event, and and you, you you definitely do it if you have to, and and don't and don't hesitate to. But you in this whole preparedness mindset that you're having, you want to you know have the combatives, have, and then have those less lethal weapons because you're gonna need them. You will probably in your lifetime very very few of us will actually shoot a gun in a lifetime in the line of self defense. But I can bet you that a lot of us will use a less lethal weapon in self defense of some form. Probably so, and that, you know that kind of comes back to what we're talking about too. It leads me into this: uh, well, what is the best option for you? And I, I tend to prefer, and and so does David. He he understands my line of thinking here. I tend to prefer a pepper spray over a stun gun. Mm -hmm. And 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 I say stun gun because I want to make a separation between a taser and a stun mm -hmm. gun. It's different. A, a taser. What I mean by a taser is basically a gun that'll shoot out barbs. 20, 25 feet that sticks in, you know, the the, mm -hmm. the opponent, and it sends the shock through the wires. That is a taser, and in my mind, that's a taser. Yes. The stun gun is the electrodes are actually built into the device. You have to physically touch the assailant mm -hmm. with the device. Uh, you you have an example there, don't you, David? Of a yes, stun gun? yes. This is a, a stun gun right here. And I notice the electrodes. Basically, what happens is when he pushes the button, there's an arc between those electrodes right there, and anything that happens to be in the middle of that arc is what gets shocked. Well, the problem with it is you have to actually physically touch your aggressor with this device for it to be effective. And 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 Dave and I both agree, especially if you're a female, uh, that that's really not where you want to be. No. If, if you're already within contact range of the guy. I mean that that's it starts to get sketchy real fast, you know what I mean? And then then you're looking at maybe it can actually be taken away from you and used against mm -hmm. you. Exactly. And that that's my whole thing. Whatever weapon you have, um and more important so when we, we get we get we get uh, up to guns and knives, they can be taken away from you and with a st with a stun gun, you gotta be such close quarters. I I have this was good this 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 was cheap Amazon twenty bucks. Um just fun to have. But uh, I w this is, I mean, the, one of the last things I would carry because I'd have to be so close to that person. I'd probably want to fight them first, right. then try and them take this and use it on me or my wife or somebody. So uh, I think it'd be good, like as Jack and I were talking about, for dogs or for animals. Have this when you go out to walk the dog or the animal if you don't want to carry a gun or can't carry a gun. I mean, this is better than nothing, certainly. And you can learn how to use this. It's a very effective self defense tool. But just know, you know, like this comes with a like a with like with like a wrist strap. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that's somewhat tough. I, and I had one before that I gave to my brother that I think the wrist strap had a pin, and if it was pulled, the pin got pulled out. This couldn't be used. And uh, as long as you have that wrap properly around your arm, right. uh, you could then you could that, then use it that really option. That's a good idea. Oh yeah, yeah oh yeah, idea. no, for sure, for you sure. Know, and the thing is, like I was talking about earlier, you have to be careful of. Uh, let, let me put it this way. If if when when you're talking about guns, if I get shot with a thirty eight, be it a Smith and Wesson or a, a Ruger or whatever, chances are the effect is gonna be exactly the same as if David got shot with a a a a, a, a different type, you know, a different type mm -hmm. of revolver, a different type of thirty eight or a different type of nine millimeter. Mm -hmm. A nine millimeter is a nine millimeter is a nine millimeter. It don't really, you know what I mean, the, the effects don't change. Now, if you're talking about stun guns, if you're talking about tasers, there is a huge difference uh, mm -hmm. in, in the effectiveness of one of these little things. You go buy at the gun show for 20 bucks and a professional grade, uh, law enforcement grade taser. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll give you, and I've been stunned by both. I, I've been hit by both. And I'll tell you what the difference is. And for anyone who ever grew up in the South, we... Uh, we had farms in the south. We have electric fences, okay? And uh, basically, it can be barbed wire. It can be straight mm -hmm. wire. But it's just uh, you have an electric current going through the mm -hmm. fence. The, you know, the animals would get up against it. it shock them a little bit, and they get away from it. When we were growing up, the, the fun thing to do was to grab a hold of these and see who could hold them the longest. Yes. And, and you wonder why I am the way I am in my head <laughs> right now. But that, that's what we did for fun, right? So it was about like for people who have never experienced that, it's about like sticking your finger in a light socket. Mm -hmm. And it's not the most comfortable thing you're ever going to do, 
but it's not intolerable either. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that if you've ever wired up a 110 plug in your house and get shot by it, it's like that. You feel mm -hmm. the electricity, you feel it burn a little bit, it sends a shock through your body, but it's not it's not that you can't overcome it with enough willpower, you know what I mean? Yes, you, correct. You, you can. And when you're talking about a professional grade taser, I've been hit by those with the barbs and what it does, it sends enough voltage through your body that every muscle in your body contracts at the same time. You cannot stand up. I don't care who you are. I don't care how tough you think you are. You can't stand up to it. Your body will become rigid and you will fall over. Mm -hmm. Now, as soon as the current stops, you can hop right back up. You're fine. Yes. For, for the most part, unless you have a pre-existing health mm -hmm. condition. But, but it will drop anybody that I've ever seen get hit by it. Um, with, with a few rare exceptions, and those usually those exceptions were when the barbs didn't penetrate because of clothing or whatever. Um, but there's a huge difference in the effectiveness of these. So if you're going to carry one of these uh, uh, stun guns or tasers, by all means, do your research first. Find out what you're getting yourself into, what kind of training you need to get. Find out the effectiveness of the one that you are buying, and don't skimp on price. By, by all means, do not skimp. You know that that is not when you're talking about your life being on the line potentially. Mm -hmm. That's not the time to skimp on price. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, for sure. No, uh, David, you were talking about your impact weapons a few minutes ago. And you had an example for us. Yes. Well, first, you want me to show the pepper spray first? So we were yeah, talking yeah, about go that. Ahead and okay. Out the um, this is um, this is a regular can of Ruger spray. I carry this inside my everyday carry bag. Now, again, check check your local laws, and it has a little safety clip there and Jack's got something there too and you would simply you know it's got a button in there you press and it sprays out this is a good bit too and this is Jack's about the same size can this is what this is a lot bigger than those five dollar ones you'll get for your keychain right this is uh, actually this is one I keep in my car I, I keep this in the console of my car and um, it's just something that I can have out really quickly like I said and, and I don't really keep this in there for um, uh, I, my, when I, my thought was when I, now it does have a belt clip on it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you see that, but yeah. I don't carry it. My, my thought when I put this in the uh, console of my car was uh, uh, animal deterrent. And the reason is I'm a computer technician. I go to people's homes on a regular basis. Uh, um, I, I do make house calls. If I, if I get out of my car and I'm going to a customer's house, and I, I've had a lot of times I've had dogs approach me. You never know if they're going to be friendly mm -hmm. or not. I have this in my hand ready. Oh and, yeah. And, and you never and, and yeah, I mean you don't want to go to a customer's house and shoot someone. <laughs> no. You know what no. I mean? That that makes for bad business. Uh, so, yeah. You know, but but I have this just in case I get out. You know, you kind of assess the dogs. You you know if they're going to be aggressive or not. If they come up and they're wagging their tails and they want to sniff you, that's mm -hmm. one thing. Mm -hmm. If you have a couple of dogs run out from behind a house and they're growling and snarling, they're coming at you. That right there. That's, that's your first line. Right? And this is another one that I carry. This is like, I keep this in my truck. It's actually a pepper spray gun type. It's got two canisters right there. I was gonna say, does that use the little cartridges? Uh, yeah, I don't. I, yeah, I don't think they're replaceable. I think it's a one-time deal, and it's cheap enough. It has a little safety lever right there. You break that and you squeeze it in. And this would be good for crowd control, or I mean, or, or you know, anything as far as that goes. Um, I think much more of a range than um. You know, than uh, this right here. Right, so, probably get out there so good. this in my truck is my first line. If it's a drunk, some, so I, I, I don't want to have to pull my gun out. I just take this out right here. There you go. And you mentioned my um, impact weapons. I have two. This is um, a tactical pin. Now, um, there's a lot of these on the market. Gun stores have them. Amazon has them. This one is um, uh, this one's by Shred. It actually has a whistle in here, a fire starter, and a little glass breaker, and everything tactical. But anyway, these are these are actual pens. You can use them, and this is on the the, the bulkier side. But the point is, the tip of the pen is it was made for impact, and you would take this and you would uh, can use it in self defense in a vulnerable area of the body. Now, now this couldn't be very much a deadly weapon. Um, you know, if hit in the temple or somewhere, but you don't have to have a tactical pen to use a pen in a in a in a in a deadly fashion. And, and that's what I was gonna. That's what I was about to get to, David. You you, you hit it right on the head. Mm -hmm. um, there there are certain situations where 
you would probably not be able to get that that pin through security. Uh, I, I'm not sure how they are at certain some airports, mm -hmm. but around here, if you walk into the courthouse and you had that uh, you had that pin on you, you would be leaving that up front. Yeah, court because, it's, because it's clear enough. It, it would be clear enough to the officer doing the security mm -hmm. checks that it absolutely could be used as a weapon. And Correct. In those cases, I have a uh, I have just a regular pin. It's just a professional-looking uh, pen mm -hmm. that I use here in my office when I get a customer to sign off on their uh, release forms for their computers. And it, it's an aluminum pen, uh, regular length and everything, regular width of a pen. It has uh, rubber. It's rubberized near the mm -hmm. end. But, I mean, it is it is very, very sharp. When you when you pop the point out on it, I mean, you're looking at a 5-inch piece of a, a sharpened aluminum right there. And, and that right there would probably be you could probably get that through most security places you could probably just put that in there with a regular well, certainly and you'd be fine so kind of keep in mind all these things you know that that, that make that pin that mm -hmm. he just showed great and tactical will also get it flagged by a lot of security persons. it will it, and I, so when i fly i just carry a normal pin on me mm -hmm. and a normal pin placed right with the right power in a certain part of the anatomy will do just fine again and that that goes back to weapons of opportunity oh, yeah. and uh, the, though a pen is definitely a pen pencil anything of that of that form is a weapon of opportunity so, that and, and there's no place I've ever not been able to take a pen to some of the worst uh, uh, things that I've seen when I was a correctional officer is uh, and for those of you that have sensitive ears you might not want to listen to this part but uh, I've seen a guy stabbed to death with an ink pen before uh, the, the guy got to him in his cell, and he had a uh, he had a metal barrel ink pen, and he stabbed the other guy about 96 times in the face and neck. And I mean, the guy basically looked like hamburger by the time we got to him. So it's it's to, to, to it, think that it can't be lethal. Uh, it, it can absolutely be lethal. It can definitely give you an advantage in a situation. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you you take a stab to the neck. You got three inches of steel sticking in your neck. It will usually get your attention. Yeah. So. And then, again, we're this is just advocating for self defense, obviously, in all these situations. And um, another another thing I have, I forget what this is called. I think I, I got it off Amazon. I think it was really called like the Angry Cat or something. And it's a keychain, okay? It's a keychain, and uh, it's got two. But this is kind of like a very probably not plastic, but it's like a very hard plastic. That's type what of I was going to ask you. What was it made out of? It, a very, I'm very bad with materials. I think it's a very, like, it's a very dense plastic. Okay. But it's made to, if you're walking like from your, you know, your office to your car, if your keys are on here, you stick your fingers in there, and you walk with your keys. If you had to punch, it has two pointed ends. Now, again, um, very much check where you live if this is legal, because I was telling Jack, you know, brass knuckles are illegal in most places, and I would contend. Place right. This is worse than brass knuckles, um, but this is an option you have uh, for that. I, I see a lot of uh, not a lot of women, but I see a, a decent amount of females that um never really something this gnarly. They make similar keychain weapons, impact weapons that look a little bit less obvious, and I see quite a bit of women that uh, have them on them, and I've always kept them in one in my truck. I, I they'll keep this on my on my get home bag. Now, see, so. I, I'd say. You know, with a female, if she had something like that, I would say it'd end up being more of a deterrent than it would be a, uh, a viable option. And the reason why I say that is this. If, if a man is intent on, uh, 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 he's going to rob a female or mm -hmm. he's, he's intent on kidnapping her, molesting her, whatever, he doesn't want someone that's going to fight back. Mm -hmm. and, and usually any level of resistance is enough to make that guy back off. Uh, especially getting hit in the face a couple of times or something like that. That's yeah, going to make that guy that would hurt. back off. So, you know, in, in that case, you know, it, it's more of a deterrent than anything mm -hmm. else. But it's, it goes back to the same thing with pepper spray, same thing with your stun guns, whatever. And, mm -hmm. and like David said, and something like the, that impact weapon he just showed, definitely check with your local laws, your local jurisdiction regarding that. Um, that brings us back to the whole brass knuckle thing. Mm -hmm. The reason why brass knuckles have such a uh, uh, a bad reputation is because, you know, earlier on they were given the reputation of a thug's weapon of choice. Mm -hmm. Mafia weapon or, you know, that's what they, they used to break your legs with or whatever. Mm -hmm. And Same thing with switchblades back in the 1950s, 1960s. They were given these... Uh, they were given this negative image. They were shown in a negative mm -hmm. light. That, that's the thug's weapon of choice. And and 
even to this day until recently it was illegal to carry a uh, automatic knife uh, in the state of Tennessee mm -hmm. now that law has recently been removed from the books and you can now carry but but it, it never made any sense because you could carry a 10 inch blade bowie knife mm -hmm. hunting knife on on your belt openly mm -hmm. and it was perfectly fine but god forbid you have a three inch long switchblade and it's just one of those stupid things because of the negative uh, uh, light that they have been shown in in the past, and and you know I'm not here to uh, get on my high horse and say mm -hmm. you know well this this law is stupid that law every every place is going to be different, but the, basically we don't want anyone listening to this show and go out and get a pair of brass knuckles, knuckles or an impact weapon and think you're perfectly fine. Check your local laws first and yeah. make sure you're legal to carry it, and not only legal to carry it, but would you be legal to use it? in a confrontation and, and the reason why I say that is here in Tennessee you're going to love this you can actually go to a store and mm -hmm. buy a pair of brass knuckles right off the right off the counter there there are stores we have here we have a military surplus store mm -hmm. and uh, like a GI Joe type place whatever yeah you can go in there you can buy a pair of brass knuckles no problem you can walk out of the store with them when you walk out the store with them they're no longer a paperweight they become a weapon and you can go to jail for carrying them it's I, I again I think Jack's right. I would even some states with a gun permit, you cannot carry certain less lethal weapons. I, I mean, yes, I have all the times I've shown you again. This is more of a this is more of a hobby for me. But I the only thing I carry of those that I showed you as carry on my purse or even in the bag that I carry with me is um is though is my tactical pen and pepper spray. I just. I bought this because it was thought it was kind of cool to have, and yeah, I have it in my truck if I needed it. But again, I mean, um, I, this is way too much to carry on my keychain. If I need to fight somebody, I'll, I'll I'll just fight them. But I just don't think that's the right thing to have. And the stun gun again, um, I, I I like it, but again, it's not something I want to use as priority because you have to get way too close to the person. So pepper spray and keep a distance. Three feet, no more than six feet. Usually, then it starts kind of going down. Um, and then you know the, the tactical pen is just something that I think that's just very or, or a sturdy pen. You don't have to get a tactical right. pen. I mean, they say tactical and they just raise the price. But get have just a good sturdy pen with you. Well, you know that's how that works, right? If yeah, it it's called tactical. Tactic cool. Yeah, the price goes up eighty percent. Yeah, right exactly. <laughs> so that I mean, and again, whatever you're going to carry, get trained in it. Definitely. The same way you would a gun, and then combatives, and, and just and, but check your local laws because they vary so much by states. Even in the South, Florida is a little more lenient than than uh, some other states are. Pepper spray, I, I think you're generally safe in areas that aren't extremely liberal, if you will. Pro, um, pro criminal. Areas. Pro I, I I call it the areas that have pro criminal laws. Right. Because we all know criminals, uh, we all know criminals uh, uh, just abide by laws. But anyway, um, that that could be a whole other podcast. Oh yeah, yeah. But, I'm um, sure we'll get into that at some point. But pe pepper spray is my favorite. If I, if you were to take one takeaway from this uh, podcast, if you never dealt with any kind of less less lethal weapon, I would start with pepper spray. It's most likely legal where you live, and it's very practical. You don't have to be close to the person; it can go with you. Almost and, anywhere. And you're looking at good animal defense, too. And exactly. Defense. And, and I can almost guarantee you at some point, uh, and like David said, at, at some point you're, you're going to, especially if you live in a, uh, 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 a rural, in, rural environment, uh, and you don't. You live more of in an urban environment. So yeah, I do but, suburban. But I, but I live, you know, I live in a more of a rural, rural type setting for the most part. I live in, you know, a suburb. But after you get past this, it's it's all country. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, every almost every family has a dog around here. I mean, it's mm -hmm. very rare to actually see uh, uh, to actually go to someone's house and them not have a dog or mm -hmm. or, or something, or at least their neighbors have a dog or two. Yeah. And uh, that that that's not uncommon. And I have had. Um, since I've been living uh, in, in my area, my current location, which has been about 11 years, I have never had to pull my weapon uh, on an individual in, in a self-defense situation. Never have. I've had to pull my gun three times when I was attacked by a dog. Now, I've never had to shoot a dog that was mm -hmm. attacking me 
uh, since I've lived here. I have done that before I moved here. I never had to shoot a dog that was attacking me. Uh, but I have had to pull the gun out and thought I was going to have to use it. And at the time, I did not have the pepper spray option on me. So mm -hmm. now, when my wife and I walk the block, and we do this during the summer months, now I carry just a little little uh, a vial of pepper spray. It's good for about one or two shots. But, you know, that's probably all you're going to need, and you don't end up shooting the neighbor dog right there in the front yard. So exactly. you, you keep the peace, and nobody gets hurt. And it's just a good... Uh, uh, it's good to have something that will bridge that gap between hand-to-hand mm -hmm. uh, uh, -hand combat and, and lethal force. Uh, exactly. It, you, you don't. The more options you have, the better off you're going to be, I think. Uh, it, it's almost like, um, you know, it, it's just one, one of those gaps. It's one more piece of the puzzle to fill in with your preps. Mm -hmm. you, you have your water preps. You have your food mm -hmm. preps. You know, you have your, your, your combatives, and it's just mm -hmm. one more one more tool to add to your arsenal that I think everybody Definitely. should have. I agree, and, and I'm, I'm a big fan of pepper spray. Um, I think that's the best way for everybody, and um, it's not just for women, and uh, again, I think Jack made the great point, it's great on both people and animals. Uh, you really, I mean, a stun gun, again, you get very close to the animal. You're, you're not going to be fighting an animal, that's, that's very rare. Um, so definitely pepper spray is the way that I would go train in it. Um, I'm not saying Jack likes to think you have to get sprayed. Um, maybe get a whiff of it like I did, where you at least <laughs> you get a little bit of respect for it. Well, and, it uh, depends on where you're at. I mean, when, let, put it this way: we had a police department mm -hmm. that when 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 you actually went in for your certification mm -hmm. for pepper spray, what they would do is they would put a line under it under each eye. They they would spray it on a rag and they would wipe it under each eye. And, and you got the effect of it without it being, you know, too too terrible. And you, you had to have it on for like 30 seconds or whatever, and then they go hose your face off. Mm -hmm. Now, the correctional facility that I work for, uh, when you got sprayed there, they walked up a foot away from your face, and they hosed your face down with it. Oof. And you got this orange foam all over your face, and you had to, you had to do... A certain number of mm -hmm. things. I, I think we had to. Uh, one one of the things we had to do, we had to take down an adversary, and and cuff them up while having this pepper mm -hmm. spray on us. So you know, it, it varies. I, I don't think you have to go that extreme with it, but but mm -hmm. I think you really should uh, uh, at least be exposed to it at some point, so you kind of know what you're doing to the other person. Does that make sense? Yes. Oh, and some of these do. I don't think this one does. Some of these do have dye in them. Where it leaves a color on the on the uh, mm -hmm. criminal's face, so the police can identify. Right. And I've seen some now that leave. Um, it's like what's that, what's that, Jack? Ultraviolet, where you were like you can't see it right. except for well, a black light. A black light over yeah, you it's like it, a yeah. U. I saw one recently where it leaves uh, something only only a UV light can see. So that would be good for um, for the police. And, and obviously, if you ever have to use well, any weapon, but even a less lethal weapon on somebody. And they flee, you know. Use your judgment, but I would call the police still. Uh, definitely call the. If you've ever, if you ever have to use a weapon in defense, whether it be uh, less mm -hmm. lethal or whatever, I'll always call the police because you you never know you never know what's going to happen in a situation like that, and you don't want to be the second one on the uh, 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 on the books, so to speak. No, you, you want you want to no. be the first one to say, listen. This guy did this to me. I did this. That way, if somewhere down the line he comes back and says, "Hey, he did that. I was minding my own business. He walked up and sprayed me with this," you're already on the books as saying, "Hey, mm -hmm. you know, wait a minute. This guy called me a month ago and said that you did this." So you already started the paper trail, so to speak, uh, and you yes. want to be the first one to do that. Uh, today is a very um, uh, here we are in 2015, and it's a very odd time. And nowadays you have situations where a guy can be trying to rob you. You pull your pepper spray out, spray him with it, and he can sue you. Exactly. And also, not, 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 and not just call the police, but if there's witnesses to what happened. Definitely. Uh, and any combatives, less lethal or, or, or lethal, mm -hmm. get you, you want to get their information. Right. And, and be vocal. You know, be, yes. be vocal about it. When you, uh, if you have to pull your pepper spray out or your Kubaton or your stun mm -hmm. gun or whatever it is that you decide to carry for your less lethal option, if you have to pull that out, make sure you are very vocal so that any witnesses around, and there will be witnesses, exactly. I promise you, somebody's going to come out of the woodwork and say they've seen it. 
Mm. Uh, but but be very vocal about telling the guy to stop doing whatever he's doing to you. <clears throat> um, you know, tell him to stop loudly mm. several times. Stop attacking me. Whatever. <clears throat> I know that sounds very uh, hokey to to do that. No, it's important. I've but, actually but it been is very important. I've actually been trained in that. Yeah, uh, and it's very important to establish in, in the witness's mind. Who the victim is and who the aggressor is. Yeah, the nail on the head. The one saying, "Stop! Stop attacking me! Leave me alone! Go away! Stop attacking me!" If you're that guy, I mean, and what they see is they see this person who wants to be left alone, and this other person is being the aggressor to them. Mm -hmm. Now, if you just pull out, and if you pull out whatever it is that you pull out, and you say, "Hey, mf'er." This is what I'm going to mess you up, and then you spray him down or you beat him with your mm -hmm. impact weapon. Now it starts to look kind of sketchy in anybody's mind who, who, who witnesses. Then when the cops get there, there's not going to be a clear line. Well, uh, was he the aggressor? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I don't know. All I seen was he pulled something out of his pocket and say, hey, mf -er, I'm going to mess you up. <laughs> yeah, Next exactly. Thing you know he's on this guy. Well, now you look like the bad guy, even though you may have been perfectly justified. You know what I mean? Exactly. Establishing witnesses and helping the witnesses by saying, hey, stop. Stop what you're doing now or, or, or I will have to do X, Y, or Z. That go that goes for combatives too, um, and that helps the witness, like you said, then know who's the victim and who's the attacker, right. because um, you know that's just uh, that's just good common sense. Good common sense, and, and we're all about good common sense and being realistic around here. Being real, that's what's the name of the show. So uh, I think that's a good place to uh, to wrap it up here. Excellent. Here. And uh, I hope everybody uh, hope everybody enjoyed the show. Again, if you have any questions, I mean, we'll be more than happy if uh, if you want us to do a show about something. Uh, the the realistic prepper uh, at gmail.com send us any questions you have in the comment section below you know leave us some comments give us a thumbs up subscribe tell your friends about us we're, we're on uh, iTunes we're on YouTube we're on Facebook mm -hmm. tell your friends have them like the page exactly yes um, all those links are, are though are down below for the email and Facebook we're one like away. We're 99 likes. We got 100 likes. We'll do a gear giveaway. So that's probably going to be in the next episode. So we'll announce in the next episode how to enter that uh, that giveaway and 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 the one what it what it what it what it will be. So should that that uh, should be good stuff. That's our way of saying thank you for following us. Thanks everybody for watching, and we'll see you next time. All right. See you.